What is going on guys and girls, my name's Evolution and a welcome back to Feed the Beast Infinity. So guys, today we are up in our lab and things looking pretty good up here. I've um, gone ahead and transferred everything, and I mean everything from downstairs, all the chests that we sort of had scattered around. We had the safe there, we had chest there, chest there, I mean most of it's gone. As you can see, I've only got a few bits and... Uh, I've organised it all upstairs, so I've somewhat upgraded our storage system. It's nothing too fancy, not too fancy at all, but it's these barrels um, from the Better Barrels mod. So I'll quickly show you guys where are they? Barrels. These bad boys. So they're quite simple to make. You just need a chest, some logs, and a single slab, and uh, they make these barrels. And what you can do with a barrel is, for example, you get an item, and you just right-click it, and it will store just that one item. And I think you can store up to, like, 64 stacks of that item so for example here it says I've got two lots of 64 stacks and six pieces of stone and uh, as far as I'm aware the better barrels um, can be upgraded as well so yeah you can upgrade like the space and whatnot there's some cool little bits you can do to it also over here I've got my safes because I'm playing on a multiplayer server with other players so I've been using a carpenter safe just to secure my goods down um, to make sure you know not that anyone would still, but it's better to be safe than sorry. But this is where I'm going to be keeping all my stuff. It's nice and organised now, and uh, more relevant because I'm always spending my time up here as opposed to down there. So it makes sense to have it all up here. So anyway guys, moving on to today's episode. We are going to be moving all of our machines up here. So as you see, they're all in the chest. They used to be downstairs in the corner. If, we, if you remember rightly, we had the, um, we had the Aculus Accumulator just here uh, with the fluid ducts with all the water coming through into our steam machines there so that is no more quite evidently and I've removed the uh, I think we had the sterling ger generator and the alloy machine and we had some machines along here as well so I've moved all them to make this a little bit more open because as I said we spend all our time upstairs it makes sense to have them all upstairs it was also quite fiddly being down there so Let's get on with it. So what have we got? We have got our sawmill, our redstone furnace, the pulverizer, and the Accus accumulator, magma crucible, fluid transposer. They're all our machines from thermal expansion. Then from Ender IO, I've got the sterling generator, alloy smelter, and a sag mill. And obviously, most importantly, we've still got the three steam dynamos. Um, they're pretty good, to be honest, at powering stuff, I have to admit. But this time with our configuration, we're going to power the energy cell, and then... Um, power output it from the energy cell to our machines so you know I've got my cables here, I've got the fluid ducts uh, the fluid conduits and the energy conduits uh, I've got my crescent hammer here as well which is going to be quite vital so it's really just a case of setting it all up here so I guess first things first we really need to set up ourselves the accumulator with our dynamos right so let's go ahead and grab the Accus Accumulator and we're going to want some of these guys as well and of course we're going to need a little bit of water to, for the uh, for our accumulator so we'll just quickly go grab ourselves two buckets of water and we'll be right back alrighty then guys so first things first we need to put our Accus Accumulator down so we can water cool our steam dynamos so I've mined this little area out here as you can see and uh, the idea is if we put like the accumulator here in the centre if I get some of this sticking glass, we're going to have like a sheet of glass here. So you can look at it, but obviously it's going to be built into the wall. I think that would make a cool little effect. So what we're going to do is, if we add um, a water source to the left and to the right of the accumulator, then uh, it will be able to pick up water at a much rapid rate. So yeah, it's going up by about 800 every two seconds, it looks. Whereas if we only had one water source it would probably run out pretty quickly. So by having the two water sources, it allows the accumulator to pick up, you know, from either side. Um, but what we're really going to want to do, as far as the um, fluid conduits go, we're probably going to want to run them f underneath the flooring, I guess. Um, because, yeah, what we'll do is, let's mine down here, and we'll run them underneath. This should go rather interestingly. Like that and like that. And we should just be able to run the conduits underneath like this. 
yeah that looks pretty good to me and then if we just connect that one up awesome okay yeah so we have got definitely got fluids coming in that pipe haven't we we need to um give this guy a little knock in a sec if they don't connect like this what you need to do it's really really a bit of a pain we have to like knock it from the uh, the joining bit like that there we go that did the trick didn't it uh, I've got to quickly fill this in as well so we just need to put one more conduit down and as I said if it does this it usually happens when you've got fluid in the pipe and you're placing empty pipes down the uh, conduits just give it a tap like that and there you go boom Bob's your uncle it connects up pretty nicely so if we try and get ourselves out of here there we go good stuff so now we've got um our water flowing underneath from the accumulator and I said we can always go in if needs be we can go in and check but uh, as you can see, it's it's running fairly stable at 4,000 MB, which is more than plenty. What we're going to need to do now is I'm going to configure this um, fluid conduits to the seam dynamos, which I think we're going to place perhaps along this wall here. Now, if we put these along the wall here, we've then got to draw out power using the energy conduits from the top. So I'm going to have to think how we're going to do this. Perhaps we could do the same similar thing with the glass wall and uh, then we can pull the pipes out the top. So I'll have a little uh, configuration with these conduits and I'll be back in two ticks. Welcome back everyone. So, making a little bit more progress, as you can see here, we've got the steam dynamo set up, looking pretty awesome in our little encavement area there. And uh, as we go down here, I'll show you what I've done with the fluid conduits, because originally we actually came outwards, but now that I've thought about it, I said that I was going to use the same technique I've done with the Accus Accumulator so we can fill this whole panel in with uh, thickened glass as it would be so it would be like that and obviously it would all be filled now I think that will look pretty cool to be honest and um, perhaps put a division there or whatnot but you guys get the, uh, the general idea so I put the steam dynamos across here we're going to have three and uh, we're going to have our energy conduits coming out of the top but of course we need to get the, um, the water uh, to cool them into the bottom. So it's quite easy and straightforward. Literally out the bottom of the accuracy accumulator, and we're going to have them running into the bottom here. I've just had to go away and make a few more fluid conduits, um, which I've done so. We connect that up like that. And, you know, in saying all this, do we really need to connect them all? We shouldn't, should we? If we just have one centre connection point, that should evenly spread the water th across the three, like that. And then if we give this a little tap of our crescent hammer, there we go, beautiful. So we've got like um, a one into a triple diversion connection there. And let's give one of these a tap. Yeah, water's filling up, good stuff. And what about this one? Yeah, awesome, okay. I'm, I'm impressed with that. So we've now got water um, cooling our steam dynamos, which is what we like. That's obviously being produced via the Accus Accumulator. So we're sort of halfway there. Now we need to get the energy from the steam dynamos elsewhere. So we're going to go over to our chest and grab ourselves some energy conduits. Now what we need to do is we need to tap these onto the top like that. There we go. And we want the power coming out the top. So the crescent hammer is pretty important in this bit. So there we go. We're going to make sure the arrow is facing the top. So we know that the power is coming out the top into these guys. And what I'm thinking is best. Now instead of running underneath we're asked to mix this up a little bit. I think we're going to have to go over the top into a let's say a leadstone energy cell which is going to be sitting right here we're going to put the energy cell here so we need to get power uh, energy conduits tunnel uh, through like this maybe that should do the trick where's that brought us out to yeah that works awesome okay so if we like go like that like that like that and then just run these through what we can do is we can then pop our um, leadstone energy cell, which is what we're using at the moment. It's not the best, but it will do. It's pretty good. It's a good start. We're going to put the leadstone energy cell here. In fact, I think I put one too many blocks in now that I think about it. Like that. And uh, we should destroy the roof so we can get in. Oh, well, never mind. Try again. All right, we're going to have to like jump. <laughs> There we go. Awesome. So now we just need to connect this up, which in theory, same principle. If we just tap the energy conduits, that should link things up. 
there we go nice so you just have to make sure you've got the right configuration and then we're gonna want that going in there we go so using the crescent hammer we've directed the power out the three steam dynamos into this bad boy here which will then fill up so if we put the max input make sure it's on the maximum red uh, redstone flux per tick uh, we're going to turn the output off for the time being and let's get ourselves some coal and give this a go so we'll put a bit of coal in all three of them let's just you know divide this equally that's equal enough for me so boom boom and boom let's make sure these run all fine nothing's going to blow up so redstone flux is increasing here steam's going in the water's decreasing but it's automatically refilling yeah happy days and we've got nothing coming in to this as of yet alrighty guys so I've just had a little quick look behind the scenes and had a tweet with the the, uh, the energy conduits here I've had to go into the configuration of the energy cell and uh, change this cube here which is the uh, the back panel which is where we've got the power coming in to blue uh, that seems to allow the power and if it's on yellow nothing goes in if it's on orange we're not getting anything so it needs to be on blue I'll be entirely honest here I'm not too sure of what the configuration colors will mean I just know you need to set them up correctly so usually I just have a general little bit of a click around and uh, it's sort of self-explanatory really if you've got power going in all good if not you'll have to um, have a little fix around but nonetheless the steam dynamos are producing power they are all currently decreasing they're losing the redstone flux that's in them but that's because they are instantly being output outputted into the energy cell which is what we want so that works awesomely so now last of all all we need to do is uh, tidy this up and now we need to output this into our machines which we're gonna have placed along this wall right here so we have all our machines we can sort of have them here and I guess we can have them along there as well if we want we're going to put all our um, machinery across there. So I'll tie this up and I'll get the machines prepared. Hello everyone and welcome back. So guys, as you can see, I've uh, finished up the boring tidying up process. And I've got to say, that's looking pretty damn awesome up in the lab now. If I just take that, look at that. That looks pretty cool, right? So what I've done is, is obviously, I've just tidied everything up. We've got the leadstone energy cell fully charged now in the wall like I said we was going to have. And I've put a little um, carpenter's door here and just blended it in with the stone brick. So it just looks like a division. Um, but actually, what we can do is, if we open that, we can then come into the back. I've made it one deeper um, on the wall because, of course, I remembered that we need to access these steam dynamos and we need to be able to put coal in them, of course. And if this was all sealed off using the glass, you, know, you obviously can't tap inside the dynamos, right? So we've got this little door here, which then allows us to come in here, access any, you know, any of the conduits if we need so. And most importantly, we can then put our bits of coal in there and whatnot, so we can produce power. So I'm pretty impressed with the way it looks. I am a lot about aesthetics, me, um, as well as functionality. And then behind here, of course, we've just got our conduit cables coming through. So. Now for the fun part, we just need to rig our machines up now, so we've got full function. Um, I could do with some item conduits, but I think we'll have to look at that in the future. I've got plenty of conduit binder, but we need some of this pulsating iron. And my problem being is that I need an ender pearl. And I honestly lack ender pearls. I don't think I've got any in my chests. Honestly, it is almost impossible. For the time being, we are just going to literally put the machines up in a nice order so for example i think we're going to start off with the pulverizer with then the redstone beside it because we're going to change the configuration in here to then instantly output any dust into the furnace that makes sense right and also a few item hoppers might be a great idea as well i'm sure we've got some in the chest here we do indeed so we can put that on the top like so and if we just give these a little knock that should do the trick we need to make sure we've got the output on the top as well. There we go. Awesome stuff. And of course, we do need to power these guys. So, we're going to have to mine away at the wall again. And I guess what we're going to really need to do here is divert the uh, conduits off here, I guess. Yeah, that should work pretty well. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. That's that connected there. We've got power going into there. Happy days. Alrighty then. Well, guys. 
I've finished connecting all our machines up. You can see along here, I've uh, put the last bits of the machines. I've got the Ender IO machines here as well. Obviously, they don't actually need powering by our Leadstone Energy Cell because we just simply put some coal in the in the um, Sterling Generator. I know it's not ideal, but it does the job. So I'll quickly show you back here. What I've done is we've got the power source. This is the um, the power flowing from the three steam dynamos through these energy conduits straight into the leadstone energy cell which is obviously charging this bad boy and you can see at the moment it's at the maximum 400,000 redstone flux then we've got an output out the bottom and it runs here to this diversion point where we've got it running into these three machines um, the pulverizer, redstone and sawmill and then it also diverts up to the top into the magma crucible and fluid transposer. And that is how we're wiring this up. It's pretty good. Um, the only little niggly thing I could really moan about is obviously once it's all covered up, let's fill this black back in. Unfortunately, obviously this, um, this energy conduit is exposed. So at the moment I've just put a block there to sort of cover it. There is such thing as a um, painting machine and what you do is you get the painter machine and you grab yourself I believe it's a conduit uh, for Cade let's have a look yeah you get one of these and what you can do is you paint them in the sort of material you want so in my case I paint them with stone bricks and uh, then that would nicely it's like a cover so it's not a full block it would just cover that wire as if it was a wall um, so I'm gonna look into getting one of them in the future but nonetheless, I've got all the machines sorted, so we've finally got a effective and efficient working lab now, all in this corner. We've got all our machines nicely displayed. Now, the only thing left to do now, really, is ideally what I'd like is to get some item conduits, but I can't currently craft any. Um, they're these guys, part of the Ender IO mod again. Um, but we need some pulsating, pulsating iron. Um, fortunately, to get that, we need the ingots and... They require ender poles of iron in an alloy smelter. Problem being there is I don't actually have any ender poles. I've got nothing. So I'm going to have to go hunting some endermen or find an easy way to get some ender poles. And once I've done so, I can make some item conduits. And in that way, what I can actually do is, for example, I can have an item conduit coming from the redstone furnace straight into the iron chest. So once everything's smelted in here, it would automatically extract it out into our chest here like so and I could do that the same for the sawmill as well if I really wanted to um, which would be fairly useful but for now I've just sort of got to manually move them to and fro but uh, I've configured the machine so for example if I put this stack of cobble in the pulverizer once it's pulverized due to the configuration it's now going to output that sand straight into our um, redstone furnace obviously there is stuff in the hopper but once this chicken's done it'll pull the sand through so cobblestone gets pulverized instantly gets pulled through into the redstone furnace and then smelted into glass and then eventually we'll have some item conduits that will run it straight into the chest and deposit it. at the moment unfortunately I've got to manually take this glass out but it's somewhat automated which is fairly nice and you know the same goes for the sawmill if I was to put some logs in there which if I can just quickly go grab some have we got some to hand yeah nice we'll use these logs if I put some logs in here, they'll obviously get chopped up and they will automatically do be deposited as planks in the chest, like so. Happy day. So that works pretty well at the moment. As I said, the uh, item conduits are definitely something I need to look into and perhaps a few more item hoppers. And last of all, the only thing I haven't really covered is these two bad boys up here. So the magma crucible and fluid transposer work sort of in collaboration with each other. Um, the magma crucible is used for sorting melting um, ingots down and uh, pfft, dust, I guess. Yeah, for example, redstone. If I was to put redstone in here, that would melt it down into a liquid redstone. And then that will then get poured straight into the fluid transposer. And then you usually combine a liquid along with, for instance, another dust. Um, so that's how that's going to work. And that's all configured up as well. The only thing is I'm going to leave it so it doesn't automatically do it at the moment. Because sometimes you don't actually want it to deposit into the transposer. And you just need it for your own personal use. So if needs be, I can set that up, which will be pretty nice. And then last of all, guys, we have our um, Ender IO machines. Literally, we've just got our generator. All we've got to do is put a 
put a bit of coal in here and that will power these two guys. As I said, it's not greatly efficient, but um, it does the trick. So, for example, like that. That will now power this guy here. And that will start working away with our cobblestone that's in there, as you can see. But, overall, guys, as a whole, I'm pretty impressed. It works pretty well. I can easily access, access my steam dynamos, put some coal in. The machines are fully powered. There's more than enough power in the leadstone energy cell. It will, it will last a fair while. And what I'm thinking about doing, which I think will be pretty cool, is perhaps putting another leadstone energy cell here. And maybe another leadstone energy cell there. So sort of dotting a few of these energy cells around the lap. And that way, the steam dynamos can um, power all these energy cells. And then from each energy cell, it will power a section of machines. So this energy cell is responsible for these machines. And for example, this energy cell here would be responsible for these machines here. So then that way, it's sort of like wireless power. And it saves us having to run like cables from one main hub all the way around the room. You know, the conduits are a bit of a pain to wire up sort of thing. So that's a cool little idea I've also had. But I hope you guys in, have enjoyed this episode, and if you have, be sure to hit that like button. As I said, overall, I'm pretty impressed. It looks cool. It does look pretty awesome up in the lab, and it's going to work much better than it did previously. So guys, I'm going to go away and get some item conduits so I can set some sort of automated system up. And then I will catch you guys in the next one. I hope you did enjoy it, guys. If you did, support the series, hit that like button. And as always, guys, stay awesome.